Yeah, I know a lot of you have been ready for me to uh, crack this thing open and take a look at it. So I thought today we'd do a teardown on this Hewlett Packard Model 410A vacuum tube voltmeter. And this meter is a it's a high frequency um, vacuum tube voltmeter. It'll cover from about 20 hertz to 700 megahertz. Although I'm here to go right on up to a gigahertz. Um, so this makes this uh, meter a good candidate for restoring old tube equipment. So we have a uh, a range here. It'll cover from one to 300 volts AC, and it'll cover one to 1000 volts on DC our select switch gives us plus and minus AC and ohms we also have our ohms adjust and a zero adjust down on the bottom panel you see we have provisions coming out the front for our four test leads our DC volts are common our ohms lead and the AC lead and nothing real special about the uh, resistor lead or the DC lead. But what makes this meter unique is this AC probe. And inside this AT AC probe is a diode tube. It is the 2-01C. Uh, and there's also another one inside the, uh, the unit. So there's two of these little small vacuum tubes in here and they're made by iMac. So let's tear this thing apart and see what's inside of it. So I got the unit out of the case and you can see back here in the back is a compartment that comes out and this is our DC battery compartment. It uses two DC um, D size batteries. Let me see as a very old ever ready haven't seen this uh, symbol in a long time that looks like these and this battery here is green and this is an old Rayovac it almost looks military I've never seen one in a green package before but if you notice inside the bottom of the compartment you have two binding posts on the front and then there's a couple of the clip and there's a spring clip here and what this is designed to do is take your AC probe and clip it in and when you bring it up you can use these binding posts to measure low frequency so I thought we'd start first by opening up this probe and having a look at the tube inside There it is. There's our iMac tube. And it simply just pulls right out of the socket. And you can see here this is our anode in. The bigger ring is our cathode and the end is our heater connection. The cathode also shares one side of the heater. The top of the tube on the anode on this one is spring loaded. That's so it'll make a good connection when it goes up inside the probe. Now I will tell you that uh if you ever have to take one of these apart and do any soldering to this tip with a couple of solder connections inside of it this is made out of polystyrene and you can't put no heat to it or you'll destroy this polystyrene As you can see here on the socket, 
we have our cathode and inside you can see our heater connection and you just line up the two and push it right in I would say that Hewlett Pack was way ahead that time when they built this meter. Looking at the top of the meter, we can see our power transformer. This is a 5Y3 rectifier. And this is the back of our meter base. And you see we have one microcapacitor across the meter. And also there's a, it's like a 50 microfarad, 50 ohm electrolytic capacitor across the meter base. You can see there's a uh, oil field cap here and we also have a pair of 6A G7 tubes. Now here on the side on our control board we'll have six potentiometers. The first two is to set the heater voltage. The top one here is to set the heater voltage on our um, two little small um, 2 01 c tubes and this sets the heater voltage on the rest of the tubes. the other four connections are our um, adjustments for our range on our meter scale as you can see here we have our range selector switch and it's all ceramic um, wafers all but right on the end we do have a uh, bake light select the switch and you can also see these um, position resistors that's that now you got to think now this this meter was made between somewhere between 1945 and 1950-ish somewhere in that range and here at the end of the control board we can see our, our other um, 2-01C tube so we can get a better view of that and it's sitting in there the cathode and the filament has really turned black on this one from oxidation so that'll have to be poured out and cleaned and tested to make sure everything's okay So you can see this cable coming out the back and that's our AC power cord. And the first thing I've done was chopped it right off to start with. I'm very impressed with the uh, power cord. It was in real bad shape. If you look here on the bench. You can see how bad a shape this AC plug is. I would be scared to uh, force that into any kind of socket. So if you're playing with one of these at home, just remember that there is high voltages in this plus mains voltages. So if you do so, you do at your own risk. So here underneath, we can see the socket for our 6SN7. And I pulled the tube out. And uh, I don't know if y'all can see this or not. I thought that was part of the getter, but you see right there there's a burnt spot in the tube and there's no getter underneath of it. But what I did see was a big piece of metal blob that looks like has shorted out from the tube. So I'm going to have to uh, test all the tubes anyway. But the part I do not see on the schematic is this board here. And it has a little transformer. There's two capacitors under it, a tube socket, and a variable resistor. This is the wear around variable resistor. And this is the tube that was in it. 
and the uh, schematic does not show this circuit nor does it show this tube so uh, I've looked at the tube and I'm not able to find any number or brand on it it's completely been wore off so if anybody uh, has one of these and if it has this board if you know what this tube is uh, and what this board is for please leave it in the comments down below it's quite interesting I tested the 6SN7 and it tests good it shows no shorts but with that broad spot I don't trust it so that tube will be replaced and it almost looks like this may have been an add-on from Hewlett Packard I'm not sure again if uh, anybody knows anything about this board um, please leave it in the comments below as we can see here there's another little board in here that has a lot of carbon resistors in it and here's a big wear around resistor with a another resistor uh, in parallel with it coming off the same terminals I do not see this in the schematic neither I'm looking here at the AC cable that comes in and you see it's tied to ground up here at the um, selector switch but there's two wires coming off of it so this looks like either the cable's been replaced and someone didn't cut the wires right and just barged them together sold them didn't uh, put no heat shrink on them or at least put some tape or something on them you got to keep your eyes open for things like that because that's possible you know a place for it to short out here under the board is two paper capacitors Again, I do not see these on the schematic. I'm not sure what they are, but they will need to be replaced right to start with. So here what we got now is a pile of parts. I got the front panel off. And this is our meter. It's a big healthy meter. I don't know if you noticed it while ago, but on our front panel here we have a calibration tag and it was cal last calibrated February the 2nd 1962 by BM thought that was pretty interesting there's another sticker up here but I cannot make out nothing on it no idea what that is Over here is a little better view of the uh, little metal plate shown before that I cannot find on the schematic. You see there's a transformer of a tensiometer and one tube. Now here it does say 6-4 on the tube. Now Hewlett Packard is real good for putting the tube numbers on the chassis. Um, everywhere there's a tube in here, there's a tube number on the back of it. We see this big wear around potentiometer, like a diode on the bottom of the tube, one resistor, two capacitors. Then it has one wire that comes around to an adjustment on the back of the unit. Then we've got a couple of leads coming around over here, one going to ground. And the two transformer leads going up into the unit. So again, if anybody has any information on this part of the circuit, I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, Hewlett Packard, uh, when they built this, they built nice pieces of equipment back then. Even all the way up to the 8640B that I have, which was built by them. A whole lot better than the uh, computer stuff that they're claiming to build now. But I'll link uh, 
the data sheet in the service manual to this down below anybody wants to uh, have a look at it and this is what it looks like when the front panel is off you see these big beefy heavy duty potentiometers here where the ohms adjust and the zero adjust and a big pilot light the only uh, desoldering I had to do to get this off was the, the fuse I had to desolder the wires off in it and you know then the switch just I mean for the meter just unbolted so got a lot of work ahead of me here um, I got to go through do a complete cleaning and then start testing components test resistors test tubes replace all the capacitors that are um, electrolytic style those paper caps has got to go there's also a lot of these uh, micro capacitors in here the big square ones and like the ones here on the uh, back of the meter I very very seldom see them go bad but still it's, it's good to go ahead and check them now instead of having to uh, do it later in case one of them has failed so we'll have to get all those checked out but uh yeah a lot of work um, again if uh, someone knows what this board on the back here is leave that down below and say this is not on the schematic or in the bill of materials and UPS just left dropped off a little package so I already know that's the end from ICOM America so those that have been waiting for me to get back on the ICOM 745s I now have the last of the parts to do it with What we've been waiting for. Our six pico ferret and our twelve pico ferret trimmer capacitors, and these are ceramic. So, yes, they can get back on that now and get those two uh, units finished up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed a little tear down. Like I say, I'm not getting to repair. I'm just making this list of what's got to be done what has to be replaced and uh, we'll go ahead and, and start cleaning this thing and uh, probably end up having to soak it first and then clean all the switches and all the contacts on all these wafer switches anyway until next time if you enjoyed the video please give me a big thumbs up if you haven't subscribed plenty more to come and we'll catch you next time.